Constitution given by the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk Golick, roll call. Markovich. Here. Spatelli. Here. Venez. Here. Kalwinski. Here. Ulacki. Here. Higgs. Here. Emerson. Here. Enosa. Here. Opinker. Here. Moving on to number three, reading of minutes. Mr. President. Councilman Spatelli. Make a motion to accept the minutes from January 13, 2014. Second. It's a motion by Councilman Spatelli, second by Councilman Kowinski to accept the minutes from 113 of 14. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes pass. <laughs> Moving on to approval of claims. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Markovich. Move for approval of claims January 8th to January 22nd for council meeting January 27th. Beginning with claims dated 110.14 and ending with claims dated 122.14, claim number 467 through claim 798. I so move. Second. It's motion by Councilman Markovich, second by Councilman Spitelli. Acceptance of claims. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Councilman Markovich. We have some additions. Claim number 799, Universal Attractions, Inc. $1,500. Opening ban for. This is an amendment. Is there a second? It was second by Councilman Spitelli. You need to pay attention. Uh, opening ban. Claim number 800, clear channel, $7,500. Advertising for commercials for weekend getaway. Must be something to do maybe with the Festival of the Lake. Oh, from the Hammond Port Authority. Claim number 801, $306,542.79. Hammond Academy of Science and Technology, 2014 bond payment. Claim number 802, Community Development, $200. Monetary donation for the Hammond, from the Hammond Council to the Community Development. I so move. Second. Any other discussion on the amended claims? Mr. President. Councilman Higgs. That last claim that uh, Councilman Markovich is for the homeless count, and uh, they're going to be doing it in the next couple of days, so that's why I was trying to expedite that and trying to get them some funding. However, uh, I don't think the check is going to be cut to this weekend, but uh, if anyone's willing to give any uh, monetary donations or uh, gloves or socks or anything, uh, deodorant, you can uh, submit that to redevelopment, and I think Daryl Lynn is handling that in redevelopment. Any other discussion? Clerk Golick, roll call vote on claims as amended. Markovich. Yes. Spatelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Ulacki. Yes. Higgs. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Hinosa. Yes. Opinker. Yes. Amended claims passed 9 0. Now the claims is written. Clerk Golick, roll call vote. Markovich. Yes. Spatelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Ulacki. Yes. Higgs. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Enosa. Yes. Opinker. Yes. Claims passed 9 0. Okay, moving on to public hearing. There is none. Uh, next item will be communications. Any communications? Mr. President. Councilman Higgs. I did receive some correspondence in, in regards to um, the Bethany issue. I'm trying to locate the paper so I can make sure. Make sure I have it here. I think the problem was is that someone's interested in buying, and I guess the mayor is 
assisting in those endeavors. Mr. Mayor, would you like to speak? Yes, Mr. Mr. Uh, Councilman Higgs, thank you. Mr. President. Mr. Mayor. Um, after the last council meeting, I know that there was some concern about Bethany Child Care being on the demo list. I was asked to get involved. I want to make it clear to the council, I, I, as a policy matter, never get involved in individual cases like this um, because you can only get in trouble, quite frankly. Uh, however, I got involved in this situation and I found out that Bethany Child Care, the demolition order was prompted by a letter from the third district councilman, Councilman Higgs, who I imagine was getting lots of complaints with his, from his constituents about the condition of Bethany Child Care. Uh, when we get a complaint from a council person like that, we follow it up. So we went through the formal demolition process with Bethany Child Care, uh, late, I mean, three quarters of the way through the process after Bethany had been placed on a demo list, Councilman Higgs asked us to hold off. Um, you know, I, took, I talked, spoke with Councilman Higgs today after speaking with my city attorney, uh, Attorney Cantar, talked to Councilman Higgs, Dale Parrish, who's a board member at Bethany Child Care, and we agreed that we would stay the demolition order for up to six months, and that in the meantime, it was incumbent upon Mr. Parrish and the board members of Bethany to come forward with details about this, this quote unquote investor that's going to buy it, and if this investor could come in and get things done, like they say he's going to, and we wish them well and look forward to the next life of Bethany Child Care. However, I think Councilman Higgs, and I'm not speaking for you, um, if, if nothing happens within the next six months while we stay this demolition order, I think it's, best, it's in the best interest of the residents of 3rd District and the City of Hammond to move forward on this demolition. Chris, did I misstate anything? Councilman Higgs, I, I don't want to speak for you. Well, basically, I mean, I know this summer I went through and I can justify the fact that there was a lot of debris in the alley and the neighbors were complaining as it relates to this. I think this initially started back in April. And since April, for some reason or another, they're telling me, you know, it's a lot of miscommunication, but someone's saying that for some reason or another, they weren't notified of the hearings. I know there's a procedure you have to go through board of works. I don't know what happened, who got notified, who didn't. All I'm hearing now is this, there's an interested buyer that wants to redevelop Bethany and make it feasible for the community, which I have no problem with that. But we, again, I don't want a building to just sit there vacant for a number of years and not be utilized. And animals are living in there, windows are busted out and the neighbors are complaining because it's just sitting there not being utilized. So if it's someone interested, I applaud their efforts in making it a feasible, economical resource in the community as quickly as possible. That's all I have to say in regards to this particular issue. Mr. President. Mr. Mayor. One of the things we have to be careful of about as a city is we do thousands of properties, demolition, and typically when the house is on a demolition order, Typically, people will come forward right as we're about to knock the house down and say, I got money and I'm going to fix this place up, even though it's been sitting there in a dilapidated condition for you know, up to 10 years. Suddenly, they find money and they say they want to do it. And oftentimes, we find these last minute investors that come forward can't get the job done. So I don't want to say we're skeptical, but I want Mr. Parrish and the board to prove that this quote unquote investor actually has the wherewithal to follow through on his promises. Because if they can fix Bethany and get it back to the condition it needs to be in, we wish them well. However, if after some due diligence on our side, if we find that this investor doesn't have the wherewithal to get the project done, I think Councilman Higgs would agree that we have no alternatives at that point but to move forward. Correct. Thank you. I appreciate it, Councilman Higgs. Any other communications? Mr. President. Councilman Emerson. I, uh, received a letter, uh, and this, this is an old, relatively last year's resolution, but I wanted to uh, read it. It's from a Dr. Thomas Yule of 5900 Park Place in Hammond. I'm writing you uh, to thank you for sponsoring 13R-22, a resolution prohibiting discrimination by sexual orientation or identity in the city of Hammond. This is an excellent first step in bringing equality to all citizens of Hammond. Laws, resolutions, and ordinances which extend equality are accorded respect and those who pass them. Simply put, respect for one is respect for all. In the future, I hope the Hammond City Council will use this action to attract additional business and people to our city. As a permanent resident, I applaud your efforts to make this city economically healthy 
and continue its growth. Hopefully the Council will consider passage of ordinances which will provide all families with marriage licenses regardless of origin with equal benefits, bring equality language into all its contracts within city agencies and unions, and as contracted service providers if they comply with 13R-22. In the spring, I hope we can find time to sit down together and discuss what the city's legal counsel's opinion was regarding the resolution and implications for possible city ordinances. Thank you. Sincerely, Thomas Ewell, Ph.D. Mr. President. That's all. Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I know we're speaking on communications, and I was reminded by Clerk Golick, anybody that was at the executive session today got to see an executive session I've never seen in all the time I've been doing government. Um, we literally negotiated a fire department contract during an executive session today. Um, it still has to be put in formal offer from the city, but we agreed to the terms at the city council meeting, uh, excuse me, executive session earlier. I'm going to follow it up with a formal letter to Mr. Lamelli, the union president, tomorrow. And we were assured, the Hammond Council and the mayor was assured that as long as we give the offer that we told them we would, that they would approve it. So a lot of people were tuning in today, I imagine, and came here expecting to see a big fight between firemen and the city of Hammond. And instead, what they saw in executive session was a negotiation continue with the Hammond City Council. And I want to thank the members of the city council for acting as a mediator. Um, that was the first negotiation I had that was a failure that went past the time when we were supposed to finish it. Um, however, I think that we, we reached a deal today, and I think it's a fair deal for the city. I think it's a fair deal for the firemen. It's going to result in an immediate increase of staffing of firemen per day. Uh, the, the firemen agreed to sacrifice some days off in order to increase those levels. And uh, truck one, which has been talked about a lot lately, is back in service for the duration of the contract, which I know Councilman Yulaki is happy to hear. Um, I think it was a great deal. And like I said, you know, the council, all of you, uh, I want to thank you personally because that was a very acrimonious negotiation. And I think you guys helped out a lot. So thank you very much. I didn't know if anybody had any questions about that, but the fact that you were there, like I said in executive session, the next time my wife and I get in a fight, I'm going to bring her in here and we're going to fight it out in front of you guys because I think you can solve it. So, <laughs> so thank you guys. Mr. Mayor, yes, just sir. to correct the record. I, I don't believe it was an executive session. Oh, I'm sorry. The public was present. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you, Bob, right. for pointing that out. It was not an executive session. It was just a council right. caucus. Thank you. I apologize correctly. It was a council caucus that was open to the public. And in fact, there was a reporter in there, lots of members of the public. So anybody that got here early got, got to see a treat, in my opinion. But again, to the members of the council, I think you guys did a great job today, and I appreciate it as the mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Any other communications? Mr. President. Councilman Higgs. See the press release that says the city of Hammond celebrates African Americans uh, veterans during the Black History Month. Uh, Hammond, as part of the Black History Month, Mayor Thomas McDermott and the city of Hammond will gather in the lobby of City Hall on Thursday, February 6, 2014, at 10 a.m. to honor African American men for their contributions by doing their WW5. Community leaders and students of Hammond High School will be participating in celebration. 2014 honorees of Sergeant One Class William Smith Jr., Sergeant James Paul Davis Sr., Cardinal Joe M. Caesar Sr., Private First Class Charles Hackett Sr. Any other communications? Communications is now closed. Next item on the agenda is committee reports. Councilman Kowinski. Council, I propose we'll be bringing out 14-01 and 14-02. I believe there's one more. 14 2 Right. Yeah. Any other committee reports? Committee reports is now closed. Clerk Golick. Ordinance 14-01 sponsored by Councilman Ulaki. An ordinance repealing ordinance 7983 and ordinance 8022, also known as section 33.02, 
of the Hammond Municipal Coal. Uh, I move that, uh, Mr. President, that, that we move this on to uh, first and second reading as council as a whole. No, this will be third and final passage. Third and final. Do I have a second? Second. Councilman Spitali, any discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Mayor. Um, because of the, the deal that we struck with the Hammond Firemen, this action that you're taking right now is, uh, as we described it in uh, the caucus earlier, that this is like a reserve shoot. This is, if all else fails, these are the rules that we would operate by with the Hammond Fire Department in the city of Hammond. One of the problems we had when we lapsed our contract was we didn't know how to treat the firemen who worked 24-hour shift. Our employee handbook is written for, fire, for employees that work eight-hour shifts, not for firemen that work 24-hour shifts. So the changes that you were proposing, that you were, that are pending before you today, were going to be our union contracts if we didn't strike a deal. We did strike a deal, it appears, with the Hammond Fire Department. So the only way these work rules will matter is if, for some reason, this deal that we struck breaks down. If it breaks down, this will be the rules that we operate by the employee handbook. So, and if there's any other labor strife into the future, because you're creating an ordinance here, uh, and some situation between the Hammond Fire Department and the city of Hammond breaks down in the future, at least future councils and future mayors will have rules to operate by, which we didn't have. So I think it's important you pass this ordinance today. Um, and it shouldn't even matter because we have a deal with the Hammond Firemen. It appears that we have a deal struck. So I'd ask that you pass this for third and right, final reading. Thank you, Mr. President. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Clerk Goldwork, roll call vote. Markovich? Yes. Spitelli? Yes. Lanez? Yes. Kalwinski? Yes. Ulacki? Yes. Higgs? Yes. Emerson? Yes. Hinosa? Yes. O'Pinker? Yes. 14.01 passes 9 0. Ordinance 14.02 sponsored by Councilman Ulacki and ordinance amending ordinance. 6049, 7472, 8620, 8638-8669-9181, 4611-7593, 7931, 4611-7593, 7931, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611-7693, 4611
But if a guy's only working eight hours a day, 40 hours, why would we pay him triple time to take another vacation day? You follow me? We're giving him 16 extra hours off when their normal schedule is only eight hours. You're extra. talking fireman, Bob? Or? I mean, You're fireman, talking yes. Yes. Fireman. I, I asked the question, there's nine, like the chief, deputy chief, uh, inspectors, right. they work straight days, oh, weekends gotcha. off. So when gotcha. they work, their shift is eight hours. Gotcha. So now what we're doing here, and, and, and I, don't, I don't quite understand. So you're saying, how do we treat the civilian, or not the, the non-shift workers, the non-shift working firemen? We're giving them an extra 16 hours of pay when in, in actuality they're only working eight hours. I'm not sure how that works. I'm not a fireman. But I mean, most, I want to point out, Councilman Markovich, I think there's nine out of 155 that are not on shift. So you're talking about... Nine. Nine, nine. Of, nine out of 150. But we're going to pay them oh. extra nine times six. I'm not sure how that works. I'll be honest with you, Councilman. I mean, if there's... Just, just taking holidays, there's 13 holidays times 16 hours. So that's 208 hours times um, 9. That's 1,872 hours that we're paying extra for people that aren't even at work. And let's just say if you take that at $30 an hour, that's $56,160. That's just for the holidays. And I, like I said, I don't know too much about the, the vacation days and duty days, but, you know, if somebody's got one week's vacation, that's 24 hours. Councilman Markovich, you want to sit up here? I could explain that because I'm a day worker. We have two day workers in here, firemen. I have my deputy chief behind me, and I have a chief inspector. In Mr. The, President. I understand that, but they're, they're working 40 Mr. hours only, but why would we pay them triple Councilman Higgs. take a day off? Mr. President, if you could please, uh, I will relinquish my seat for you to explain well, that. Usually you have the vice president. Yes. Oh, I don't care. I mean, I don't care, but... Well, you maybe brought it up. Mr. President, while, while you're moving, can I say something real quick? Sure. I, I just want to point out that a firefighter, if he gets one day off, if he's... There's one... I mean, normal firefighters are on shifts. They get 24 hours right. on, two days off. So if they take one vacation day, it's 24-hour shift, they get three days off, okay? Yeah. So if you take 24 hours off, you really get 72 hours off. Well, I mean, because you're a fireman and your next duty day isn't for four All days. days. When they get a day off, it's a complete full shift of 24 hours. Right. But when and, and a day worker takes a day off, it's eight, only hours. eight hours, why are we paying him an extra 16 hours? That's, Mr. It's Mr. President, sense. Councilman Alpinker. Uh Referring to Councilman Markovich's comment on that, uh, I'm a day worker, and when I take one vacation day, Actually, three of my vacation days equal one vacation day of a uh, firefighter on the floor because he's actually working a 24-hour period where I'm working an eight-hour period. So he's technically getting, while in this new contract, I believe it's uh, 20, 20 vacation days, which because um, I'm a day worker, I'm going to get triple that because I'm not working the full, the full uh, 24. Well, but so, but in, in getting to holidays, we're not paid. The, the the day workers are not paid for holidays. We're just off that day, where the guys on a shift are paid because they're working that day. I, I understand it. But I'm just referring to like an industry, though. When it's a holiday, you get the day off, and if you work it, you get time and a half. So I would imagine if there was something going on, if you were a day worker that you needed to work, you would get time and a half in addition to your holiday pay. But the thing I don't understand is your normal shift is only eight hours. Why would you get an extra 16 hours off with pay? That it doesn't make sense because your actual shift we is don't, 24 hours. We don't get 16, 16 hours off with pay. Yeah, you we do. just get the one day. No, according to this, it says 40-hour employee equivalent to the above in calendars days as one equals three. So if you get a holiday off, it's saying you're going to get three extra days off, three total. No, that's not how it reads. Well, I mean, somebody, I, all I'm doing is, I, that's what I'm questioning here. Bobby, can you step to the podium, Bobby? Mr. President, <laughs> I'd like to point out we're, we're, we're spending a lot of time on something that, quite frankly, is going to be governed in about a week by a union contract. So... If this is the reserve suit, as we indicated earlier. So if there is a problem in this ordinance, if, if there is, I'm not sure if there is, but if there is, it's Mr. not going to be. Mr. President. Councilman Hicks. I guess my question would be, why didn't come, this come out in caucus? I mean, we sat there for almost an hour. Well, Mr. Chairman. 
Councilman Markovic. You are handling this, handed this thing, in there, and I'm just looking at this now. It just, to me, it just doesn't make sense. I'm not sure, Bob. Bob maybe, maybe we need to look into it, though. So I'm just asking that question. Mr. Bob, President. Yeah. Councilman Hinojosa. I agree with the mayor. Uh, it looks like we have a verbal tentative agreement, and uh, hopefully we'll have a vote uh, next week, so that will oversee everything that's on here. But uh, I am looking at the residency bonus. Residency bonus, bonus. I thought it was 2400 uh, $2, and it says 6000 Oh, that's old. It's going to be changed. Oh, is that in the ordinance right it now? It says 6000 yeah, That was assuming. That's a good point. That's well, a good point. Want, want to amend it? Should we amend it? Yes. Mr. Yes. President. Thank you. Councilman Higgs. That was my question. Initially, when I see it, are we making changes? Everybody was like, yeah, we're changing, but this doesn't read what was discussed. So there are some changes that need to be actually made in the language so this is a binding contract. Otherwise, we're going by what this says. That was the problem I had. Now, uh, my other question was as to why not just table it and allow them to go ahead and vote, and then we call a special meeting and vote on it. But Bobby's thing was he can't pay them. Mr. President. Mr. Mayor. I, in response to Councilman Hinojosa, I think it was an outstanding recommendation, and my initial inclination was he's, he's totally right on this. That's why we have attorneys. Uh, I, I spoke to Attorney Cantar, and she said what we should do, and I agree with this, Councilman Hinojosa, is leave the 6000 in there. This isn't going to matter unless the contract is, fails. If the contract with the Hammond Fireman fails, we wanted to increase the residency bonus. This contract is going to be a binding agreement. If you don't get through and they don't vote with you, Mayor, yeah. and go along with it, this is binding. No, 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 yeah, but that's why we wanted the residency bonus to be higher than that, Councilman Higgs. So that if they fail to make a deal with us, the residency bonus would kick up for Hammond firemen that live in the city of Hammond. That's why it was written at 6,000. But if you want to change it to 24, I would totally agree with that, quite frankly. I understand both sides, but it seems to me confusing. Yeah, Mr. President, I think we should go ahead and go ahead and amend it anyway. I agree with you, Councilman. And I, I think we won't have to worry because the way things look right now, I think we're going to I agree with you totally. To the title. I think you should change it to 2400 just because it's confusing. If it says in an ordinance it passed by you all, it says 6000 okay. and in a contract I signed with them, it says 2400 That's confusing. I think Councilman Hinojosa is right, actually. Okay. I think we should change it. Sorry, Chris. All right. I have a motion, Councilman Hinojosa. Mr. President, I'd like to uh, make a motion to amend in under resident under resident residency bonus that we change it on the first sentence there under A from 6,000 to 2,400. Second. It's a motion by Councilman Hinojosa, second by Councilman Higgs to change the residency bonus. Mr. President. From 6,000 to 2,400. Mr. President, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the same as the police officers. Am I correct? That's correct. Any other discussion on the amended version of 2,400? Mr. President. Mr. Mayor. Something important, important I forgot to mention earlier. It's uh, Councilman Kowinski's birthday today. Did you know that? All right. It's Councilman Kowinski's birthday. We haven't even said happy birthday. We've been negotiating for two hours, and I just wanted to recognize Councilman Kowinski and say happy birthday. You've had a heck of a birthday, Councilman, and so congratulations. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. President. Councilman Higgs. Not to mention that the mayor apologized to me in uh, caucus, so thank you so much, Mayor. Okay, moving on to the amended version of 14-02A, the amended version with the 2400. That's what we're voting on right now. Okay, so what we're doing... Okay, okay. We're back to 1402A. Is there any other discussion on 1402A before we call for a roll call vote? Clerk, go ahead. Roll call vote on 14-02A. Markovich. Yes. Spatelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Ulacki. Yes. Higgs. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Hit and Olsa. Yes. Opinker. Yes. 1402A passes 9-0. Mr. President. Councilman Hinojosa. Now I'd like to go ahead and make that uh, um, uh, that motion to change that from 6,000 to 2,400. Right. There's a motion to change the residency, bon residency bonus from 6,000 to 2,400 by Councilman Hinojosa. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Higgs. Is there any discussion? Clerk Golick, roll call vote on the amended version. Markovich. Yes. 
Spatelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Ulacki. Yes. Higgs. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Hinosa. Yes. Opinker. Yes. The amended version passes 9 0. Now on 1402, as written. Clerk Golick, roll call vote. Markovich. Yes. Spatelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Ulacki. Yes. Higgs. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Hinosa. Yes. Opinker. Yes. 14 02 passes 9 0. President O'Pinker, that concludes the ordinances for final passage and adoption. Thank you, Clerk Golick. Moving on to number nine, introduction of ordinances. Item A, ordinance 14-03, sponsored by Councilman Kalwinski, and ordinance to appropriate monies into the 2014 gaming fund. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Kowinski. I move that 1403 pass through first and second reading and be referred to council as a whole with a public hearing scheduled for February 24, 2014. Second. It's a motion by Councilman Kowinski, second by Councilman Spatelli for first and second. Uh, is there any discussion? Mr. President. Councilman Higgs. This particular ordinance allows us to spend the money that was left over from the previous year. Each district councilman gets a percentage of casino dollars and the money that's left over has to be reappropriated the following year for expenditures. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? First and second passes. Item B. Ordinance 14-04, sponsored by Councilman Ulacki, and ordinance amending ordinance number 9230, also known as the Salary and Wage Ordinance for police officers and firefighters in the City of Hammond. Mr. President, I... Uh, Councilman Ulacki. Mr. President, I, approve, I, for, I make a motion to bring this out for third and final passage. No, this is for first and second reading. Just the first and second? First and second, for, refer to council as a whole. First and second, council as a whole. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? First and second passes on 1404, refer to council as a whole. President O'Pinker, that concludes the introduction of ordinances. Thank you, Clerk Golick. Moving on to resolutions. Item A, Resolution 14-03, sponsored by Councilman Kalwinski. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of Haven, Indiana, regarding a certified deduction application for the Citywide Housing Infill Program. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Kalwinski. I move for passage of 14-R-03. Second. A motion by Councilman Kowinski, second by Councilman Spatelli for final passage of 14R03. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Councilman Higgs. Can you give me a general idea what this grant is going to do for our city? The sponsor, that is, Mr. Kowinski, Councilman Kowinski from the first. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Kowinski. This is in line with what we've been doing in previous meetings regarding the CHIP program. And now we have an application for uh, submitted for the location at 2041 to uh, abide by the 10-year tax abatement. And so this this has to do with application for that 10-year tax abatement with the graduated uh, scale that's found in your packet, along with the application made by the individual or the couple. Any other discussion? Mr. President, is, is there a particular property that this is going to assist with? Mr. Chairman. Councilman Kowinski. The, the resolution uh, indicates it's 2041 Lake Avenue. Any other discussion? Mr. President. Councilman Spitali. On these uh, properties, that are incremented for 10 years 
for tax abatements. Uh, once you purchase the property after you build it, one the first year you start that, not after you buy. You have one year to build the property, build on the property. And that's throughout the city. That's just not in uh, uh, first district, it's throughout the city. Uh, I guess it was passed, Claire Gold, maybe you can tell when that ordinance was passed, when you were councilman yourself, I believe. Got any idea back in the 80s or 70s or what? Remember? <laughs> Let's not go too far. Uh, <laughs> I, I have a couple of those uh, as a realtor that I didn't know the, that existed, uh, having the uh, tenure abatement, but throughout the city uh, that was passed by a council in the past. Any other discussion? Mr. Chairman? Councilman Markovich. Um, looking at this statement of benefits for 2041 Lake, are they saying that piece of property is worth $271,000? Mr. President? Councilman Spitali. Total assessed value on that property is 23000 It was purchased for 23000 one year ago by the gentleman that uh, put in his bid on it. Chairman. Councilman Markovich. Are they planning on building another apartment building there? Looks like it's zoned for residential from what I found here, what I see here. I got this off the assessor's website. Yeah. It's all for single dwelling. It's 0.17 acre for this property. You're looking at page two? No, I'm looking at what he typed out of the assessor's website. Under the statement of benefits, um, where it says section three, it says current number, it says 15. What does that mean? Where was that at, Council? On the statement of benefits, page one, section three. Uh, the fourth paragraph on down, Councilman? No, on page, uh, Statement of Benefits, Real Estate Improvements, page one, oh, okay. section three, it says current number, it says 15. Mr. President. Councilwoman Venez. Section three does say estimate of employees and salaries as result of proposed project. Current number 15. Mr. President? Councilwoman Venez? Uh, as I understand this program, this program was initially set up for vacant properties throughout the city of Hammond. Um, if an individual does purchase uh, a vacant property and builds a single family home on the property, they are entitled to a 10-year tax abatement. It is single-family home, owner-occupied, for the 10 years that they receive the abatement. Sounds like that explains it. Any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, but I'm just asking, what current number 15 is this current local market rate? It doesn't say it's a single-family home. If they're going to build a house for two hundred forty-nine thousand dollars, there, two hundred seventy-one thousand, two hundred seventy-two thousand after the, it's built, somebody's going to build a house there for two hundred seventy-two thousand dollars. Mr. President. Councilman Perez. Uh, the building that was on this property was a multi-unit dwelling. Uh, Councilman Markovich, I saw you um, at the fire. Um, uh, scene when this building burnt down. Uh, there were several illegal apartments in, this, uh, in that building, and it is quite a sizable piece of property. So it's very conceivable that someone could build a home for roughly $250,000 on that property. Chairman. Councilman Markovic. Yeah, I was at that fire, but 
what I'm asking is, it says current number 15. Is that the 15 units that was listed there? It says estimate of employees and salary as a result of proposed project. Well, all I'm saying is, usually when we have current employees, when we do this in the past with industrial, that means the current number of employees is going to be retained after the project's over with. So my question is, are they going to say, is it 15 employees to work on the project, or is it going to be 15 apartments that are going to be put back in there? That's my question. And that's what I'm just asking for to make sure what it says here. I've never seen this before where we're asking for statement of benefits. Right, we do have a 10-year tax abatement for single-family homes, but I don't understand why it's saying current number 15 and then current local market rate for employees and salary. We never usually list what the trade people are going to be there. This is for what we do, Jupiter Aluminum or something. If we give them tax abatement, they're going to have 90 employees, then it's going to have 90 employees. But I've never seen this before on a single family home. That's why I'm just questioning, are they going to build a 15 unit apartment building there? I'm taking that current number as 15 is 15 units. Mr. President, Mr. Mayor, can we bounce this until the next council meeting? And get We're going to do that right now. Motion get to the it. table. We can get Motion answers. to the table. I believe me, Councilman Markovich, this administration is not interested, and I know Councilman Mark's not interested in seeing a 15 unit apartment complex right, go back in. Okay. Well, so let's just make sure we know. Councilman Mark, is that all right? Or? I have a motion to table this. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? We'll get in. 14R03 is tabled. Moving on to 14R04. Resolution 14R04 sponsored by Councilman Emerson. A resolution in opposition to House Joint Resolution 3. Mr. President, I'm going to bring that up. Mr. Mayor, I want to thank the City Council for hearing this resolution. Um, I know it's no secret that the state of Indiana, uh, last uh, two years ago, filed something called HJR6, House Joint Resolution 6, which attempted, which started the process to put a ban on gay marriage into the Indiana Constitution. The Indiana Constitution is written so that the only way to make constitutional amendments is to pass it through two general assemblies. And if it passes identically through two general assemblies, the bill is submitted to the people for a referendum. All right. This is the second reading of HJR 6, which has now been changed to HJR 3, but the content of the bill is exactly the same. If one word is changed, it buys us two more years. Okay. Uh, a lot of focus is on the second, sen sen second sentence of HJR 3, which would basically say Indiana would not rec recognize civil unions of another state. So if we had a couple in Hammond that were legally married in, in Illinois and they moved to Hammond, they would literally not be welcome if HJR 3 is passed in its current form. There's been a lot of back and forth downstate about whether or not this is wise for Indiana to pursue. But if they do pass it through the General Assembly in the current form, it'll be on the ballot in November for the voters. And if the voters say yes, we're going to have a part of the Indiana Constitution that says basically, we're not a welcoming state for homosexual couples, and I think that's a travesty. I, I know for a fact we have a large gay population in the city of Hammond. I'm, I'm great with that. I think, in fact, you know, if that's, I had a, a I was saying earlier in caucus that we had a, a gay couple that moved here and told me literally the reason they picked Hammond is because Hammond's a, a progressive city and it's friendly. And quite frankly, that's one of the reasons they wanted to live here. So I think that this type of resolution shows our constituents and shows people across Indiana how we feel about this issue. And I promise you, if you pass it, I will sign it and I will make sure it gets in every legislator's hand because they need to hear how you feel and how we feel about this issue. It's embarrassing we've been talking about this. Hey, we need a motion of for this. Councilman Emerson. Uh, the opposition to House Joint Resolution 3 or HJR 3, in my view, hinges on unfair treatment of specific groups violating their due process and equal protection principles. HJR 3 will have a negative social and financial impact, as was mentioned just now by the mayor. Excuse me, Com Co Councilman Emerson, Court Golick is to bring that out and you're to forward it for, for, for vote, for passage. Okay. We need a first and a second. Exactly. That's oh. what I was getting at. Oh, I or if if or if you're in favor of what the mayor says, you just withdraw the resolution. We'll go to the next resolution. Point of order. We're looking, Councilman Emerson.
passage on this. I move for final passage for 14R-04. Thank 14 you. Hour dash over. We have a second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Mr. President. Councilman Emerson. Um, finally, HJR3 uh, proposes to add an amendment to the Indiana State Constitution. A constitution, by the way, that we were all sworn uh, to uh, defend when we were sworn in. And if you were in the military, you'd defend the U.S. Constitution with your life. In closing, you know, I thought of every year Hammond participates in the naturalization ceremony. Used to be at Harrison Park, now it's at uh, the pavilion at Wolf Lake. New citizens from around the world are sworn in after studying and passing Constitution tests and historical facts about our country. And we probably couldn't pass, I know, I, I'll speak for myself, I probably couldn't pass that test as well as they do. Uh, they really study for it. Uh, you know, it's a great day. There's a federal judge there. The mayor's been there. There's a congressman there. They're all there with their families. And uh, our Legion Post pass out little American flags, and there's flowers, and, and everybody really enjoys it. So I would like to invite all the representatives to vote yes on HJR 3 to this ceremony this coming year, if it does wind up in our Constitution. And then I would like, as we welcome the new citizens of this country, for them to explain to to all these new citizens in Indiana that their right to due process and equal protection has been denied. Thank you. Any other discussion? Clerk Golick, roll call vote. Mr. Our President, excuse me. Um, I'd like to be added to this as a sponsor. Mr. President, the whole council said, can you add the whole council unless they object? Clerk Golick, add the whole council on that. Clerk Golick, roll call vote. Markovich? Yes. Spitelli? Yes. Venez? Yes. Kalwinski? Yes. Ulacki? Yes. Higgs? Yes. Emerson? Yes. Hinosa? Yes. Opinker? Yes. 14-04 passes 9-0. Item C, resolution 14-R-05, sponsored by Councilman Opinker. A resolution authorizing the Hammond Fire Department to accept funds awarded to Hammond under the 2013 Federal SAFER Grant. Mr. Mr. President. President. Mr. Mayor. Um, just summarized, uh, Senator Joe Donnelly awarded City of Hammond and two other cities in Indiana with a $450,000 annual grant for two years that'll cover firemen. Um, part of the grant application process is we have to maintain uh, staffing at 155 firefighters. We're currently at 154 about to go to 153. So I authorized my fire chief this morning to start the process and hire two more firemen. That would be eight firemen we hired in, in 2014. So I uh, thank Councilman Hinojosa for bringing this up. I want to thank Senator Joe Donnelly for bringing 900,000 to the city of Hammond to help pay for our firefighters. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. President. Councilman Hinojosa. Yeah, I move for final passage of 14R-05. Uh, second. It's a motion by Councilman Hinojosa, second by Councilman Spatelli. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Councilman Higgs. Add me as a co-sponsor of the ordinance. Get that Clerk Golick. Dan, okay. Any other discussion? Ed Higgs. Clerk Golick, roll call vote on 14R-05. Markovich. Yes. Spitelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Ulacki. Yes. Higgs. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Hinosa. Yes. Opinker. Yes. 14R05 passes 90. Item D, resolution 14R06, sponsored by Councilman O'Pinker. A resolution authorizing the Hammond Fire Department to apply for a 2014 Indiana Department of Homeland Security grant. Mr. President. Councilman Hinojosa. I move for final passage of 14R 06. Second. Motion by Councilman Hinojosa, second by Councilman Spatelli. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Councilman Hinojosa. This $4,000 grant will update the uh, uh, City of Hammond's uh, uh, rescue rope for emergencies that's uh, used throughout the city for emergencies. Any other discussion? Clerk Golick, roll call vote. Markovich. Yes. Spatelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Ulacki. Yes. Higgs. Yes. Emerson. Yes. 
Enosa. Yes. Opinker. Yes. 14006 passes 90. President O'Pinker, that concludes the reading of the resolutions. Thank you, Clerk Golick. Moving on to new and unfinished business. Mr. President. Councilman Higgs. Got some uh, pole, NIPSCO pole lights, like uh, 6,000 block of Taffer Street, 09488 block of, uh, 6,200 block of Monroe, pole number 42886 is out, 900 block of Carol 017764 is out, and the property at 838 Carroll Street needs to be demoed. I'll make a, a motion that we send letters to uh, engineering, NIPSCO, and to uh, code enforcement. I so move. Second. There's a motion by Councilman Higgs, second by Councilman Markovich to send a letter to, who's that Councilman Higgs? <laughs> Councilman Hinojosa, I'm sorry. <laughs> Board of Works. The Board of Works. All those in favor? Chairman. Opposed? Aye. Councilman Markovich. Well, I just wanted to say that for us to take that action, all you got to do is call the engineering department and give them that poll number, and they'll put it on the computer. You can go That's on correct. Link. It works a lot faster. Mr. Pardon President. Me? Works a lot faster. Mr. Councilman President, Higgs. I can assure you that I've done that on several occasions. I had to even take off work and appear at the Board of Works meetings. There have been times where I have repeatedly given poll numbers here as well as followed up and called, and there are properties within my district that have been sitting there for two or three years that I've requested to be demoed. So the more letters, the more I put it on the record, the more results I get. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Markovich. All I'm re talking about is the NIPSCO lights because, uh, you know, I've had one in my area that it, they can only really check it at night whether the photo cell's working, and they'll come and work on it at night. But uh, sometimes it'll be on, sometimes it'll be off, and now it's been on for the last week or so, but you know, it can go out anytime. All I'm saying is if you call the engineering department, they'll put it online and it'll be there, and it's just up to, for just follow-up to see if it's working after that. Mr. President. Councilman Higgs. I applaud Councilman Markovich's uh, endeavors in trying to uh, give me direction, but I think I know what I'm doing in regards to these particular issues. And he's more than welcome to take a ride through my district, seeing that he is a councilman at large, and look at all the uh, lights that are out on a regular basis and report them. That will give me a lot of freeway to work on some other things in the community. Any other new and finished business? Mr. Mr. Chairman. President. Councilman Markovich. I welcome Councilman Higgs' invitation, but yes, Councilman at large, I am, I am responsible for six districts, so. <laughs> well, start, like, start where I don't want to start in, in one district and then the other ones feel slighted then. Well, you got to start somewhere. Mr. Councilman President, Hinojosa. I applaud Mr. Higgs if this is the way he wants to do it. It's his district and uh, I applaud you for it. Any other noon and finish yeah. business? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Kowinski. Quick announcement, uh, the Pulaski Park Neighborhood Association meeting is canceled for tomorrow due to weather. Any other noon and finished business? Mr. President. Councilman Higgs. The county will be closed tomorrow, so no need to, uh, well, the county period is closed, Mr. Markovich. That county means, what? County's a big, big uh, That means land. the East Chicago, Gary, and Crown Point offices are all closed tomorrow. Any other noon and finished Chairman. business? Councilman Markovich. So that means you'll be off tomorrow checking all the lights. Yay! Hey. My work never mm -hmm. I need a raise. Any other noon and finished business? Mr. President. Councilwoman Benez. For those who are interested in knowing what is going on in your neighborhood, I urge everyone to attend a community and crime watch meeting in your neighborhood. Uh, some upcoming meetings are, uh, as Councilman uh, Kalwinski said, the Pulaski Park Neighborhood Watch meeting or the Neighborhood Association meeting tomorrow night has been canceled. Uh, Wednesday, January 29th, the Jefferson Crime Watch will meet. Um, uh, they meet at Jefferson School at 6.30 p.m. On Wednesday, February 5th, Edison Community Watch will meet at Edison School, 6.30 p.m. On Thursday, February 6th at 6 p.m., Edison Community Watch will go on the road. They meet at uh, the Golden Manor Senior Apartment Building. 
On, uh, also on Wednesday, February 5th, Harrison Park Crime Watch meets at the VFW <coughs> at 5 p.m. Irving Community Watch will meet Friday, February 7th at Irving School at 9.15 in the morning. Uh, this is where you can bring your concerns. This is where you can find out what is going on in your neighborhood. And I urge everyone to attend. And that is how change happens. One gesture, one person, one moment at a time. Thank you, Councilwoman Fernandez. Any other new and finished business? New and finished business is now closed. Moving on to public expression, our first speaker will be Antonio Daggett. Good evening to this honorable council. It's always a privilege to address you. Um, I am particularly uh, gladdened by the results of the uh, caucus that took place earlier. Um, I think it is something that was probably long overdue. August would have been a, a better time to start the negotiations and, and we would have had the results a whole lot sooner. I want to thank the mayor for being able to get past his personal feelings. I felt that that was some of that that was going on. Um, he shared that with his concern about the clause uh, that he wanted the firefighters to sign that basically would say that, uh, the, the, that there, were, there were safety and the safety was adequate. Um, but I'm glad he put that aside, uh, put that personal concern aside, and moved forward. You know, when we think in terms of our firefighters, I have obviously great respect for people in uniform as a retired Army colonel. Um, you know, not too many people would run into a burning building when everyone else is running out. And I think if we always maintain that in the back of our minds as we're dealing with our firefighters and our, our police officers who make such a huge difference in our city, when we keep that in the forefront of our mind, then it is a whole lot easier to come to the results that we, that we arrived at today. The mayor said himself, this was a tortured path that had been taken, and I, and I thought that it could have been dealt with a whole lot better. Uh, and again, as, as a son of a, of, a, of a police officer who worked 30 years on a, on a police force, raised 10 of us on a, on a policeman's salary, uh, worked 14 years on midnights. I have a great respect for those who wear, who wear the uniform. So uh, I'm looking forward to the, to the resulting of this contract. Again, it should have been done a long time ago. And I think if we're honest in this room, we would all agree with that, with that principle, that it should have been done a long time ago. But thank God it has been done. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, Mr. Alvin Cheeks. Alvin Cheeks, and the block of Merrill. That, that 6,000 block of uh, Morris Street, um, I turned that in, Councilman Higgs, six months ago. I went to Nipsco seven times in regards to that. That's in front of the old St. Mary's Church. Um, the other thing I like to give a public service announcement, this is a gentleman floating around the third district wearing a white hockey mask. I put a scar on his face. He's going around robbing people late night. Um, about six, he's about 6-2, and uh, normally he pops up around churches late night, so if you guys are out, um, he definitely exists. Wearing a white hockey mask. You call the police? No, nah, we ain't gonna call the police on this gentleman. He's robbing little old ladies. Um, the other thing is, is that um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank the mayor in regards to saving uh, Bethany child care, and I gave the uh, city attorney my word that it would be boarded up, the back windows, and I agree with that. Also, I'd like to thank the neighborhood. We had 27 bishops in the third district this weekend, and I'd really like to thank those guys for keeping them safe. The last one left about an hour ago, and uh, it was a great event this weekend, and, and I really enjoyed it. It was good seeing everybody out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cheeks. Next speaker will be Mr. Dale Parrish. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Dale Parrish, uh, and I live at 1017 Lion Street, and I was c coming to you concerning Bethany. Um, I just want to give you a little history on Bethany and its existence as far as to date. Uh, the building has been on the market for about four or five years. Uh, the reason that uh, we were unable to sell the building or do anything with it is because um, the Internal Revenue Services actually garnished the surviving board members' uh, assets, including mine, uh, 
with garnished rages uh, for property for uh, personal income tax that were not paid uh, during the tenure of one of the supervisors of the uh, child care center. Uh, with that uh, lien being removed, the debt has been satisfied with the IRS. I am now in the process of trying to get some grants encumbered or get, uh, receive some help or sell the building property currently so that something positive can be done with it in the community. Uh, the building is safe and secure. Uh, I've had city employees come out and inspect the building. Earlier this year, uh, Mr. Callahan came out and said that the building is a stable building and a solid building. Yes, it does need some updating and it does need some, some work that needs to be completed, but we do have a buyer that is interested in purchasing the building and going to do the work that's necessary to be done. Uh, what the city is asking for me to do is ask them to buy into signing some kind of agreement, but I, I can't sell the building with, with it on the demolition list. So all I'm, I'm glad that Councilman Higgs and the mayor have given me an extension of time to get those repairs done. Uh, we do need some windows that are, need to be boarded up, uh, but overall the building is secure. Uh, we've had some instances of uh, people being in the building. Once the building was, uh, that was found out, I went in myself and removed the people and the, it was an officer with me at that time and we proceeded to take care of the building by locking it and securing it. All I'm asking is that we don't tear the building down. It's a building that could be used. I've, I've even asked the city uh, some years ago to purchase the building and probably make it a community center or make it something that's viable for the community and instead of being an empty lot. So I'm just asking uh, for a little time and patience and I will get it done one way or the other. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parrish. Next speaker, uh, Smith, Miss Smith. Good evening to the council. My name is Ola Smith. I live at 825 Becker Street. I came to address some concerns in regards to Bethany. There was a resolution um, made tonight between Councilman Higgs, myself, uh, Mr. Parrish, and the mayor, and Chris Cantar. I also have a concern as to Calumet Avenue on Becker Street. There's a used car lot. And the cars are just sitting there, and I've brought this before the council before. And they're not being sold, they're immobile. They're just there. And it doesn't matter whether it's private property, it's an eyesore. And I would like for somebody to cite them, get these cars moved, because it's affecting a neighborhood. People do live in the neighborhood. I don't like coming out of my house right down the street seeing a car lot full of cars that are old, that are not being moved. My other concern is I sat in the caucus room and I saw the banner that went back and forth between the members on the council. It was very rude for some of the comments that were made to each other. We are all taxpayers. We are all adults, and we should all respect each other, regardless to what we may feel about another person's opinions. I don't think it's uh, respectful to tell another adult to shut up, and I heard that. And all due respect, respect is a two-way street. If you want respect, you have to give respect. And I've lived in this community for 65 years. I've come on and off to council meetings, and I have not ever seen such a rude council before in my life. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Smith. And our final speaker of the evening will be Mr. George Stoya. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Councilman Hinojosa, second by Councilman Higgs. Have a good evening, folks. Stay warm.